Hello everyone, it's Adnan at the Cube team and I'm a developer advocate. Today I'll be taking you through the new Cube SQL API feature that we have uh, and we'll be using it with Apache Superset. Now let's just jump right in. Uh, first and foremost, we need to create a deployment. Now let's do, let's call it sample superset, uh, probably nine, 19. I think that's a decent enough number. Um, I'm going to uh, select AWS as the cloud platform and let's do Ireland as the region. Once I go ahead and click next, I can also select uh, if I'm going to import uh, an existing cube app or just create one from scratch. For this example, I just want to use uh, a demo database that we do have uh, just for these occasions for showing demos and examples. Uh, it's an e-commerce database uh, and it has a lot of uh, sample e-commerce data that's super convenient uh, for samples like this one. Now, of course, once you're setting this up for yourself, you have to keep in mind that these IPs need to be allowed access for uh, into your firewall. Uh, otherwise, this won't work. So make sure to add these once you're setting this up for yourself. Uh, once you do click apply, uh, you'll get the option of generating a data schema. Uh, of course, you really don't have to do this, but I suggest you do because if you select the database tables that you want to generate the schema from, you'll get all of the metrics and the, and the dimensions just generated from the get-go. And honestly, I think that it's just super convenient and really easy uh, to do it that way. Uh, let me just show you that as well. If I do jump in here in the orders.js file, you can see that this is quite literally a cube. I mean, it's it has the measures, the dimensions. The only thing you really need to do uh, is to add the pre-aggregations and that's you know up to you and your use case. Uh, also, one thing that I do want you to remember is that you have this count measure here that we uh, auto-generate as well. And this is something we'll be using with Superset uh, in a moment now. Now, once we do go back to the overview, um, I've just uh, created one uh, one app uh, over here so we don't have to wait for this to spin up. Uh, it's the exact same app, the same database, same everything. Um, and th then now once we do want to connect the SQL API, we have this new tab here. Uh, where you can go ahead and, and, and enable the SQL API and you get all of these values to add in, uh, in this case, to Superset. And if you do jump over to Superset, uh, there are only two uh, prerequisites for this. So you need to, first and foremost, create a database. And the way you do that is you jump into the database here, you select MySQL, and you get all of these fields uh, to populate. Now. Uh, you really only have to copy paste all of these values in and that's that's all to it. Um, let me just go ahead and do that real quick and select. Also, just to just to note, uh, you get the DB database uh, generated here and that's just something we do uh, inside of KubeCloud. Um, also, you can uh, dynamically set the user and password. Of course, that's something you can read more about in the documentation. Uh, so I don't have to go into more detail here. I just want to, to show you the, the simple example. Uh, in the display name, I'll just do cube SQL. And once we're done with that, just jump in and uh, generate the actual uh, generate the actual uh, database. Sweet. Uh, now once we're done with that, uh, next up, we need to generate the data set. Now a data set, you can think of it as a table um, in cube because the cubes are actually tables we can just uh, use that same logic for generating a data set here in, inside of Superset. Now, we select, of course, the kubesql database that we just generated. We'll use the DB schema, that's the default one, and let's do the orders table. Orders because, you know, that's, the, that's actually the, the schema file that I was showing uh, a moment ago, just to keep it simple. Now, once you do go ahead and add this, uh, you'll see the orders uh, data set show up here. And once you do click on it, you can go ahead and explore all of the data, all of the data uh, inside of it. Now, instead of selecting the table, uh, let me do a line chart. So it's a bit nicer for you to see. Once I do select the line chart, I'll just keep the time column that created at, but I'll select the month for the granularity. And as I mentioned a moment ago, uh, the count measure, let's just add the count measure here save that up and we get the option of running a query. Now, once we do run the query, you'll see this nice chart show up. Um, and this is quite literally data that we are pulling from KubeCloud. And to see that it is actual data from KubeCloud, this is the SQL query that gets generated that 
is sent over to KubeCloud, and then we get this nice uh, chart back in return. And that's pretty much it for the KubeSQL API. It's a short rundown, short overview. Uh, if you have any more questions, if you want to see more tutorials like this one, feel free to reach out. We're, we're here for you, and we're ready to listen. That's it for now. Until next time, bye-bye.